Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the setup of how we're going to do the calculation uh, with equilibrium type problems, but I want to do so first with moles first. Um, eventually we'll be using molarity and atmospheres. I'm going to do it the same way, but I think that you can see moles easier from what you learned back in Gen Chem 1, so we're going to handle a problem with moles. Suppose we place one mole of N2 and three moles of H2 into a reaction vessel at 450 degrees C and 10 atmospheres of pressure. The reaction we're talking about is N2 plus three H2s gives you two ammonias. Now, if we were doing an equilibrium problem, would be we would have to involve the Kc expression, which would be your concentration of ammonia squared divided by the concentration of nitrogen divided by the concentration of hydrogen to the cube. And typically, the problems that we're going to do in the future is I will be giving you the Kc, and then we will try to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of the different components. But in this particular problem, we're not going to be dealing with that. All we want to do is show you the setup of how we're going to do this table that allows us to do the calculations that we will do in the, do in the next um, chapter in this chapter and the next chapters to come. So the actual question in this problem is what is the composition of the equilibrium mixture if it contains 0.08 moles of ammonia at equilibrium? So this problem tells us our initial value uh, moles of nitrogen and of hydrogen and it tells us our uh, moles of ammonia at equilibrium. So we basically know two initials and we know a one equilibrium. And what we want to know is what is the equilibrium co composition of all three components. What we're going to do when we work these problems is we're going to build this thing called the ice table. Okay, it's a table. Okay, in essence that we have our initial value, and it's going to be a molarity of atmospheres when we tend to get into those type problems. But in this particular case, as I said, I'm doing moles because I want you to see where my numbers are coming from. And we'll do exactly the same thing for molarity as well as atmospheres. Then we're going to talk about what is the change in number of moles in this case. And then we're going to also talk about what do we have at equilibrium. Okay, this is where we come from the term ice table, I-C-E. So, first thing we do is let's put in what we know initially about our components. We know that we have one mole of N2 and three moles of hydrogen, and we said that there was no NH3. All we had was our initial nitrogen and hydrogen that we reacted to form our products. Now, they did give us the amount of ammonia that we had at equilibrium, but we're not going to use that at this moment yet. That will come into play in a few moments. So the first question we're going to have to do is look at this reaction and say, is it at equilibrium? And obviously it's not because I have zero products. So this reaction is going to have to shift one way or the other to reach that equilibrium. Since I only have reactants and I have no products, which way does this reaction have to go to get to equilibrium? It's going to have to go to the right. If it goes to the right, then what's happening to the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen on the reactant side? It will be decreasing, and how much uh, ammonia is going to be, what's going to be happening to the ammonia? It's going to be increasing. So that gives me my indication that on my change, that I will be putting in negative signs for change in nitrogen and hydrogen, and I will be putting in a positive sign for my ammonia, okay, because it's shifting to the right. I'm consuming up my reactants, okay, these are going down in concentration while those are going up for my products. So I will symbolize that by my negatives on my change in number of moles and my positive, my change in moles of my ammonia. <clears throat> next thing, next thing question comes up is, well, how much is going to change? What's going to be that change? Well, we have no idea. So what I'm going to do is just grab a figure out of the air, and I'm going to say that X moles of nitrogen are going to be consumed. Well, going back to your Gen Chem, if I have X moles of nitrogen being consumed, can I figure out how many moles of H2 has to be consumed with that nitrogen? And yes, you can. It goes back to the balance equation. There's a 1 to 3 mole ratio. So I would say, okay, then I have 1 mole of N2 to 3 moles of H2. Therefore, my moles of nitrogen cancel, and that tells me that I will have 3x moles of H2 needed to consume up all that 
x moles of n2. That's the stoichiometry. I can also figure out how many moles of NH3 is going to be produced doing a similar thing. I can say I have x moles of N2, and I know there's a relationship of 2 moles of NH3 produced for every 1 mole of N2 consumed. Moles of N2 cancel, and that tells me I have 2x moles of NH3 produced. Okay, so there's ratios here. So I, as I said, I wanted to show you this in moles because eventually we can do the same thing with molarities. I can do a mole to mole ratio with the molarities or do it as atmospheres. So we're going to do it the same way. In essence, we're going to have some amount that we say is being consumed and we're going to go with the coefficients that are in front of each one of our balance equations. So my change then in this case is going to be X nitrogen, I will have to need 3x of hydrogen, and I will produce 2x of ammonia. Instead of going down to the smallest whole number ratio, we will use the coefficients and go directly. If there was a 7 coefficient in front of the nitrogen, I would have 7x there. Okay, I will go with the coefficients and bring them down. So now I know what I have initially, and I know what my change is. Now I can figure out what I have at equilibrium by adding the two values. So when I do that, I know I have at equilibrium for nitrogen, I have 1.000 minus x. Hydrogen at equilibrium, I have 3.000 minus 3x. And for ammonia, I have 2x. That's just adding your initial plus your change. And those are my answers. 1 minus x, 3 minus 3x, and 2x are my answers. The only problem is I want those answers to be numeric values. I do not want it in terms of x. So I would need some more information to be able to solve for that x. Was I given any other information in this problem that can help me solve for that x? The answer is yes. Remember they said we had 0 0.080 moles of ammonia at equilibrium. So in essence that's telling me my equilibrium amount, okay, which means then that 2x is equal to that 0 0.080 moles. So if I divide both sides by 2, I can figure out that x is equal to 0.040 moles. So now I can plug that value into my x's and my other two expressions, and I can solve for my equilibrium amounts. Now when we get to our future problems, we're going to be using, we won't be knowing that 0 0.08 moles. We're going to basically be doing our calculation in association with the k expression to solve for that x and then plug it in. So in essence, in this problem, my final answers, we know that the amount of nitrogen will be 1 minus x, which means that I have 0 0.960 moles of nitrogen because I plugged in that 0 0.04 for x. Uh, hydrogen is 3 minus 3x, which is 3 times that 0 0.04. I'm subtracting that from 3, which gets me 2.800 moles of hydrogen. And the equilibrium amount is 2x, or we already knew the answer, is 0 0.080 moles of ammonia. For homework, 15 deals with questions dealing with how to set up the equilibrium expressions to see if you understand the setup procedure.